It was so cold. It was so wet. Oshina opened her eyes. All she could see was a dark blue sky and a dark, endless abyss below her. But why wasn't she falling? She wasn't using her wings, so she couldn't have been flying. Except, she was falling. Slowly. She was sinking, actually. Oshina then came to the sudden realization. She couldn't breathe. She was drowning. Oshina knew the danger and held in whatever breath was left in her. Her instincts immediately told her to swim up. She used her arms, her hands grabbing water to pull her way up to the surface. Her legs kicked and kicked. She saw that she was about to make her way to the surface above. Adrenaline built in quickly and she put all her strength into her limbs. Just as she was about to reach the surface for air, a hand grabbed her by the ankle and stopped her before the tip of her finger could even reach the surface. It dragged her back down. Air escaped Oshina. Her vision was becoming blurry. She then heard the sound of a child's voice. Why didn't you save me, Cassie? One asked her. Another figure grabbed Oshina, restraining her from even trying to break free. It was a dark figure in the shape of a child. Oshina could only make out the shape and the face of a rotting, dead child. Why did you let me die? It asked. More figures came out of the darkness and they grabbed Oshina, pulling her further and further down into the abyss. Oshina could hardly see the surface anymore. The figures kept screaming at her, demanding the reasons behind her actions. Oshina could feel her lungs burning inside of her. She could feel the pressure squeezing her body. Oshina opened her mouth. Her body attempted to breathe air, but all it got was the cold water. Her vision became blurry. The voices were getting louder. Everything was getting dark. She woke up, finding herself on her bed. Oshina breathed in heavily, as if she really was drowning. Maybe she was. Maybe her dream made her body think that she was. She looked at her bed and pillow to see that she was crying and sweating. She fell on her face. There was still some running down her cheeks. She would be relieved that it was just a dream, but she was absolutely miserable. It happened again. She woke up to the same dream. This was the third week that it happened. Once again, she woke up early in the morning, all because of that damn nightmare. She sat on the edge of her bed bawling out her tears. She couldn't help but think, why was this happening to me? Every night was the same. She did her routine, then went to bed, went to sleep, then woke up really early in the morning from the same nightmare. It was a loop every night. The first time she brushed it off, convinced herself that it was just a dream. But as the nightmares got worse and worse every night, she knew that something was wrong. She was really tired. She wanted to go back to sleep, but she can't. She just can't. Now if it's going to end up the same way, enough was enough. She had to find out what was going on. She decided to talk to Noah about it. Perhaps 9 o'clock in the morning would be the right time. She'll just need to entertain herself until then. Oshina stepped out of her house about 9 o'clock in the morning. The sun was brighter to her than it should be probably because she spent the remaining hours in the dark. In hindsight, probably wasn't really a good idea, she thought to herself. She proceeded down anyway, rubbing her eyes as they slowly adjusted to the morning brightness. She would have flown herself to the house of the Gray family, but she was so exhausted that she didn't even have the strength to fly up a meter. She forgot how long walking takes. Usually flying from one place to another was faster, it made her remember how much fun it was to fly around in the Antarctic. Or was it somewhere in Russia? Greenland? Never mind. It was somewhere cold, she thought again. She remembered flying around and doing tricks such as rolls and aerobatics. What she didn't like was how boring and lonely it was. The land was mostly white, just a frozen wasteland. She remembered sleeping in caves and eating small animals such as rats and foxes. It sucked. She was actually thankful that it was Noah who found her, who gave her the chance of a better life. She was always fond of him. They made a great team during the Conquest War and the Arethium War. Seeing him by her side just 
made her smile. Finally, Oshina reached the house of the Gray family. She went to the door and knocked. Noma opened the door to see a very miserable, exhausted Oshina. Blue? Noah greeted. You look terrible. Are you okay? Oshina replied with a sigh. No, Noah. As a matter of fact, I am far from okay. No one can hear the fatigued tone in her voice. Also, just by looking in her eyes, he can tell that she has been crying recently. He understood how serious the situation was. May I come in? She asked. Of course. Please, make yourself at home, he replied, leading her inside. Oshina sat down on the red sofa. It was nice. In fact, their home was nice. It reminded Oshina that she should tidy up once in a while. Skylar entered the room in her gray jacket, cyan top, and black shorts. Honey, what's going on? She asked. It's Oshina, he replied. Something is wrong with her. Skylar looked at Oshina, seeing how tired she looked. Hey, Blue, she greeted as if Oshina was a child. Can I get you anything? Some breakfast would be nice. And some green tea if you have some. Skylar nodded and entered the kitchen to make what Oshina asked for. Noah came over to the couch that was right by the sofa. What is this about? Noah asked. Oshina figured that she should start with the nightmares. These past weeks have just been awful. I can hardly sleep. I've been having the same dream every night, and it's just been getting worse and worse. Tears started to escape her sockets as she thought about it again. I don't know how much longer I can handle it. So the nights haven't been good to you, huh? What are these dreams you keep having? Drowning. I keep finding myself underwater, suffocating. Just when I think I'm about to reach the surface, a hand grabs me and pulls me back underwater. Then I hear a boy's voice. I don't know why, but he sounds so familiar to me. It gets blurry. I can hardly make out what the figure is. And more and more show up, grabbing and screaming at me. And when everything goes dark, I wake up. It's the same thing every night. Sounds intense. I'm really sorry to hear that. I know exactly what you're going through. Remember when you saw me glow red during the Conquest War? You mean, when you turn into Atrocious? Yes. Sometimes at night, I still see him. He talks to me. And taunts me about my mistakes I made in my life. I don't think I can ever forgive myself for what I've done. Especially what I did to my dearest brother. The room was silent. Neither Oshina or Noah said a word for a little while. The silence was broken when Skylar entered the room with a plate of eggs on toast and a cup of green tea. She sat down on the coffee table in front of Oshina. Oshina thanked Skylar for the meal then took a drink out of the cup. Oshina was more of a tea person than a coffee person. Hot tea or cold tea, it didn't matter to her as long as she liked it. She was satisfied. So why did you come to me? Asked Noah. I don't know. I felt like you were the closest friend I could come to, Oshina answered before slowly taking a bite out for breakfast. Noah thought for a second. He isn't exactly the therapist type, but he does remember who was like his therapist. Rytheris, Noah stated hushly. Oshina looked at him confused. Rytheris, he said again. He taught you how to use the force of nature, didn't he? He did, Noah answered. Well, what about him? Rytheris has the gift of witchcraft. Surely he can help you with these nightmares. Oshina drank some more of her green tea as she watched Noah walk to the window. He opened the window and leaped forward through it. Cupping his hands around his mouth, he shouted three words. Rai, Thar, Russ. And the sky boomed with thunder, like it was answering Noah's call. Then a small figure swooped down from the clouds above. Rytheris came down and landed on Noah's front yard. Noah gave him a friendly greeting when he stepped through the door. Noah, it has been a while, he stated. Yes, it is good to see you too, my old master. I sense you have a problem. Wouldn't be any other reason to call you over. Rytheris looked over at Oshina, who just greeted him with a little friendly smile. 
He slowly approached her and got to his knees by the arm of the sofa. Would you like to come to my hut and talk about it? Oshina was silent for a moment, giving it a thought. It didn't take long for her to answer. Okay. Rytheris stood back up, then pointed out with his finger. The index shined bright yellow, and he drew a circle with it, forming a portal to his hand. Please, through here, he said, walking through. Noah and Oshina followed afterwards. It has been a while since Noah last visited Rytheris in his hut. It didn't look like anything had changed over the years. It was pretty simple. A single bed, a fireplace, a cauldron and an alchemist set to make potions, a small bookshelf with spells and magic, and the walls and shelves were decorated with the treasures of ancient times. This is a nice place, complimented Oshina. Thank you, replied Rytheris. Now, if you can get to the matter at hand, please tell me what's going on. Oshina stood silent for a moment. I can't sleep. I can't rest. No matter what I do, nothing helps. Oshina put her hands over her face as if she was about to cry again. Flying around doesn't help. I became too tired to fly. I walked over to Noah's house. I need relief, Rytheris. Please. Please. Noah was actually surprised by how terrified Oshina sounded. Usually she was calm. Hearing her tone of voice made him realize how serious this was. I tried making a bedtime schedule, changing my diet, relaxing before bed, but nothing works. Rytheris gave some slight nods, letting her know that he's listening. I see, he responded. When it comes to continuous nightmares, it can occur for several reasons. One of them being because of external stress from mental or physical events, or caused by a psychological event that has happened in your life. Like being in that lab? asked Noah. No, it's nothing like that, replied Oshina. I got over that a long time ago, but I can't think of anything else that would make this happen. There might be a way to figure it out, said Rytheris walking to his bookshelf, pulling out different books. No, no, not this one. Not you either. You're not right for this. Ah! He pulled out a dark purple book with a symbol on it. Looked to be a drawing of a dream catcher with an eye in the center of it. Isn't that one of Nightmare's books? asked Noah. Indeed, replied Rytheris. He lent me some of his books on dark magic for me to study. He flipped through the pages, scanning over which one would be the right one. This spell should help me get an idea of how much you're suffering. To begin, Oshina, First, I need you to lie down and sleep. I must see what you're dreaming of so I can have a better understanding. Are you sure you want to see? If it's the only way, he replied. Oshina took a deep breath and laid on the carpet of his hut. Now sleep. Close your eyes and just relax, he said in a calm tone. Oshina laid still, closed her eyes, and drifted off to sleep in a matter of minutes. Rytheris extended his finger out, his index finger glowing bright purple. He slowly and gently touched Oshina's forehead, closing his eyes. In a few seconds, he connected with Oshina to her dream world. It was dark, cold. Rytheris' movements were somewhat slow. He realized that he was underwater. Oshina was an amphibious bird hybrid and can hold her breath for a long time but even she knows she can't hold it in forever. He turned to the sound of Oshina gurgling, struggling. Those same exact figures were grabbing Oshina, pulling her down further and further underwater, away from the surface for her to even catch a breath. He can hear them calling to her, screaming at her. Why didn't you save me? You're awful. I wish you were never born. How could you do this to me? Just as everything was going black, one last voice said, I HATE YOU! They both woke up in the hut. Rathorus almost was terrified as Oshina. So what did you see? asked Noah. This... this is more serious than I thought, replied Rathorus. Can you still help me? asked Oshina. Yes, though drastic measures may be necessary for this. What do you mean? asked Noah. If we don't deal with this now, Oshina's nightmares are only going to get worse. She may suffer severely. 
So what do we do? asked Oshina. Rotherus flipped through some more pages. He planted his finger on it when he found the right tape. This spell can help you, but it is dangerous. What is it? she asked. It was used many eons ago, but was banished after some, well, let's say, minor mishaps. It allows oneself to go into a dreamlike realm. It'll help us find out what's causing these nightmares. I'll do it, said Oshina. Rathorus gave her a serious stare. Oshina, I must warn you that this spell is difficult to cast and takes a huge amount of concentration. I don't care, she interrupted. At this point, I'm really desperate. If it means stopping these nightmares for good, I'll do whatever it takes. Rathorus stared at her before giving out a sigh. Very well then. Noah then took a step forward to Rytheris. Wait! Both Rytheris and Oshina looked at him. What is it about the spell that makes it dangerous? He asked. Rytheris frowned. I do not know, but this realm is filled with dangers that are created by mental and physical traumas that occurred in your life, but I never saw them myself. The room was silent once again. Noah couldn't let Oshina do this on her own. No way. Not after all the time she's been there for him. If that's the case, I'm going with her. Both Rytheris and Oshina were surprised. Noah, it's okay. You really don't have to, she ensured. But I want to, Noah said walking to her side. You've been there for me throughout the Conquest War. Well, I'm going to be in this situation with you too. He gently put a hand on her shoulder. Blue, you are my best friend. Let you go through this alone wouldn't be right of me. Besides, I feel like I owe you some. Oshina was stunned for a moment, but then gave him a smile. Thank you, Noah. I really appreciate it. What are friends for? He replied. Okay, Rathorus. Whatever you have for us, we're ready. Rathorus nodded. Both of you lie down and rest. Noah lied down next to Oshina. Once again, Rytheris extended his finger out, the index glowing dark purple. He gently marked a circle on both of their foreheads while speaking in an ancient language. Without warning, their minds completely lost sense of their surroundings, and it felt like they were falling from a great height. The world spun around them. Rytheris' voice had completely faded. Feelings made their stomachs turn. They felt as if wind was roaring past them. They could say and do nothing but fall. Oshina wondered how much longer she and Noah would feel this way until she got her answer quickly. Her surroundings became stabilized and she was met with a thud on a wooden floor. Instead of feeling any intense pain like she expected, instead it felt like she just fell out of the couch. She gasped for breath coughing before feeling the sensation of the ground below her. She lifted her head, then looked around. Noah was busy groaning, laying on his backside. Noah, are you okay? she asked. Yeah, just need a moment, he answered. He sat up, looking forward to demanding answers from Rytheris. Rytheris, what the hell was that? He was cut off guard by the change of scenery. It looked like some old vintage home. Looks as if no one stepped in here for years. Where are we? asked Noah. I don't know, answered Oshina. Noah got up, then took her hand, helping her up to her feet. Noah looked around again. Rytheris, he called out. There was nothing but his echo to answer his call. I'm guessing this is the dream realm he was talking about, said Oshina. Not exactly what I expected. Noah replied. Oshina discovered a door, then walked to it. Noma quickly followed her. Looking back at him, she said, Should we? I guess so. There doesn't seem to be anything useful here. So Oshina slowly placed her hand on the handle, then hesitantly turned the knob. What she saw next took her completely out of surprise. Outside was this city but it was covered in a blanket of fog. They could only see five miles in front of them, but that wasn't what surprised Oshina. What surprised Oshina was that this town, 
this place. It all seemed too familiar with her, but she can't recall why.